what's been eye-opening for me at this conference is just how much more is out there. Uh, and of course, one of those things is cellular meats. And then even beyond cellular meats, you have something that is animal, plant, we're not really sure. Let's find out. Thomas Jonas, thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. It's exciting. What's going on? What are you doing? <laughs> so it's interesting. You were talking about plants or animal. Yes. Guess what? There is another one. Is there? There is another I, one. I feel like this is magic. <laughs> what, what have you just done? There is this other one that's all around us. It's microbes and it's fungi in particular. Let's start with really the basics. Yes. What yes. is a microbe? They are living organisms. Yes. So they're very small. Yes. A microbe is just a very small creature. So yes. you, you have uh, microscopic algae, you have microscopic um, fungi, mm -hmm. you have microscopic, you have bacteria, you have all sort of very small creatures. And what's exciting about them is that they tend to be very efficient. Mm -hmm. In doing and what? in building themselves up. So let me oh. let me back up a little bit okay. here and telling you about what we do. Yes. So we are a company that started as a research project for NASA. Okay. And how did we get from NASA to microbes? Were you feeding microbes to the astronauts? So the question for NASA that we were trying to answer is, what if NASA is sending a probe to a moon of Saturn? Or what if NASA is sending a probe to a moon, uh, you know, to Mars? in search for life, what condition does it make even sense to look for life? The idea was to go in places where the environment was very different to what we typically have on Earth, and that's what took us to mm. um, exploring a very different piece of this planet, which are the volcanic, acidic springs of the most gorgeous nature in America, Yellowstone National Park. And we discovered new forms of life, hmm. new microbes that over m millennia adjusted to these very unique environments that look more like a different planet than Earth. These microbes, because they live in such a barren environment, they had to develop very unique strategies and technologies mm -hmm. to capture their food. There's almost no food, so they have to be very efficient at grabbing whatever they can grab and mm -hmm. use that as food. And why is that relevant to, to us today? It's relevant because right now, there's 7.5 billion of us. There's going to be 8, there's going to be 9, 10, 10 11. Maybe 11, yes. Right? And it's going to happen very fast. Incredibly fast. Yeah, it's already been happening. It's been already been happening. Yes. And just at the time <coughs> of this is happening, and partly because of that as well, global warming is happening. Mm -hmm. And our ability to grow our food is dwindling. Yes. It's becoming more and more complicated to grow the food that we know we can grow, that to double the amount of food that we need to grow, because this is what we're really talking about. We don't know how to do that. We cannot do that with traditional agriculture, which is pretty much something we invented about 8,000 years ago, and it hasn't changed that much. Right. So we need the new technology, and microbes, farming microbes, is a way to get there. The microbes that we discovered there are very interesting for a bunch of reasons. The first one is that it's 50% protein. Okay, wow. And it's a complete protein. So mm. not all proteins are equal. So if you look at pea protein, for instance, you have some of the amino acid that you need, but others you don't get. So mm. having a complete protein is very important. And you typically have a complete protein almost only with um, animal sources of protein, mm -hmm. um, and also with soy and a very few uh, plants. Mm -hmm. But overall, plants don't tend to have complete sources of protein, right? The second thing that's interesting about this organism that we discovered is that it's a filamentous organism. What that means is that it organizes itself in filaments that kind of look like muscle filaments. Mm. In, in burger equivalent, if you will, our factory will be able to produce what would take otherwise about 7,000 acres of grazing land. Mm -hmm. And this will be just in wide factory in Chicago. 
it's actually going to natively, naturally, look like more like a piece of chicken breast, like broiled chicken breast. And this is because it's striated? Yes, it's because of the texture. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So the, the microfilaments of the organism kind of get intermingled and it I makes see. this solid thing okay. that looks like a chicken breast. And um, the, the other thing that's really interesting is if you think about the miserable life of a cow, just, just, yes. you know, it's, 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 it's a sad life, but it's also a very, even if you don't care about that, it's a very inefficient process, right? right? Chicago, if you take off out of O'Hare or Midway, you fly for about an hour or two hours over a sea of corn or a sea of soy, right? Yeah. So not we, a tree to be now found. No, it's just this huge um, yeah. amount of soy and... Um, corn dedicated land. We harvest that, but really what we harvest is the corn ear. And really what we need out of the corn ear is the little yellow grain on the outside, right? right? So lots of waste. Lots of waste. After and all that time and all that water and all that land and no more trees. And okay. no more tree. And once you have done, once you've gotten that corn and you feed it to the cow. Yeah, you don't even eat it. You then feed it to the cow. You feed it to the cow. Who gives you about 1 40th. Sorry, you go ahead. So about, about, about 90% of what you're going to put in the front of the cow is going to get out in the back of the cow. Mm -hmm. So you're doing all of this, you're mobilizing all this land, all these resources, all this water, all this energy. You're spraying all this pollution into your water um, right. for a very ridiculous return. return. Right. And our goal is to put something in your plate that's going to look very much like the real thing, that's going to nutritionally going to perform at least as well, if not better. Yes. And that is going to taste good, of course, because that's a given. Uh, and that's going to use a fraction of the resources that we need. And that is, that is critical because that's what we need for the planet tomorrow.